Welcome back to more Pokemon Emeralds. So last time we caught Regirock. So we have one of the three golems now. But anyway, this time we're going to be trying to catch number two. So to do this, go to Petal Bug instead. It's closer. I don't know why I went to Dufa to be honest. But anyway, Super Impulse, let's go. So... Basically, you want to hang around the left. Until, like, you see land over here. You do need to jump off, get back on your set Pokemon. And now... This is here. So, what does this have to say for us? Translate that basically says, Stay next to, uh, you need to do a lap around the cave clockwise, right next to the walls. And I believe you check it again afterwards. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, you don't. It just happens for you. So, anyway. I can't believe that last time too. I didn't even get to talk about the funny thing about Rich Rock. But don't worry, I'll probably put that into the thumbnail. Or the title, or one of those things. But anyway, time for number two. Regice, level 40, ice type Pokemon with the clear body ability. They all have clear body for the ability, but I'm gonna storm and check it. With the moves, Ancient Power, Super Power, Curse, and Icy Wind. You may notice a pattern here, but anyway, let's go with Thunder Wave. So, Red Ice. It's the opposite of Retro Rock. 80 HP, 50 attack, 100 defense, 100 special attack, 200 special defense, 50 speed. So, it's basically... It's like Blissey. In the sense that, yeah, it's a special, but it actually hits back decently hard. That's one of Red Ice's, um... That's basically one of Red Ice's, um, positive qualities. But anyway, Super Power, that's not great, but it does have a lower attack stat, and yeah, it actually doesn't do that much. But, I think I'm still gonna switch into Smiley. Because Smiley can eat up Asia Power and Super Power, Icy Wind's still not gonna do that much. And there it is. So let's talk about Red Ice. Level up wise, it's basically the same as Retro Rock, except it lends Icy Wind instead of Rock Throw. So it still has Explosion, which still could be good, despite the fact that it only has a low attack stat, because remember, that's basically a 500 power move. And that's gonna hurt quite a bit. It's definitely gonna chunk most Pokemon. Um, other than that, there isn't that much, but it does learn Lock. But Lock on Satcan are much better for it, so. Hmm. I think I'll go for Ice Beam. Because it's resisted, has good special defense. Asian Power is kind of bad because, yeah, they can get the all stat boost and then you're in trouble. I think I could go for one more, in fact. And then we can start throwing balls at it. Say, so, they level up. Well, not Villa, but TM-wise, it's similar again, but I really want to highlight Thunderbolt, because it's an Ice-type, remember? It learns Ice Beam. Um, the TM as well, so make sure you do that. But this means that it has the Bolt Beam combo. Some other Pokemon do, like Starmie, but this is one reason why Red Ice might be considered like better than something like Blissey, because not only can it tank special hits, but it can also dish back out damage decently well thanks to that Bolt Beam coverage. Which is why I think it was used a bit in competitive during this generation. Although I don't think it was as good as Blissey. But then, uh, other than that though, there isn't much. Because remember, it's a special attacker, it learns a lot of physical moves, but it can't really make as good use of them as like Explosion. Explosion is really the only physical move it really needs. Same for Tudors. Again, Thunder Wave, I don't know if it's available enough, but if it is, then you might want to consider it. Um, same with the Tudors, and yeah, you can't breathe this thing. 
like Rich Rock because it's a Leche Pokemon and it's also genderless. Most genderless, most Leche Pokemon are genderless anyway, but yeah. So, so yeah, like I said, I kind of like Rich Ice. Also, it's pronounced Rich Ice, not Rich Ice. I thought it was Rich Ice, but yeah, it's Rich Ice, from what I can tell. Um, I think it's pretty cool, pun not intended, but <laughs> it definitely isn't like super strong because it's held back by its type actually. Because Ice is a poor defensive type, and even if you have the good defenses, um, the lack of resistances and the large amount of weaknesses are going to really hinder it. So yeah, I still like it, it's just that yeah, definitely not as, it's definitely not as useful as the other two in my opinion. But yeah, let's go back to this. To the story. I didn't even go on to the Pokemon side of the story, but yeah, to recap, um, I was watching some YouTube videos that led me to this person's YouTube videos were about Mario Kart Wii, and then he also did a video on Paper Mario 2, and I think Sunshine as well. Um, and then those last two games, that led me to a very popular <laughs> LPS channel, who did, um, Paper Mario 2 and Pokemon Fire Red. But anyway, um, I'm gonna heal, I think now. I could use Hyper Potions here. They probably are a lot better to use than Lemonades, but anyway. So let's do that. Um, Alright, back to what we're talking about. So, so, like I said, this first certain. Uh, the game that initially pulled it is Pick Mario 2, so I believe that game was actually the first game that I, um, that's the first RPG I ever played. And yeah, it's a great game. But yeah, you obviously want to know about the Pokemon side, so... The second RPG I ended up playing was Pokemon Fire Red, as you'd expect. In fact, uh, during that time, I didn't know what emulation was. I wouldn't know about it until my brother got into secondary school. So, I actually played both Fire Red and Emerald on the cartridge to begin with. But yeah, afterwards I used emulators because emulators are a lot less finicky, I guess you could say. Because I do believe like the battery issues and stuff, and also in MA you could do a lot of cool things with these Pokemon games, actually. But anyway, so yeah, Fire Red ended up being the first Pokemon game I played. I believe during that time too. Oh yeah, that's another thing I should mention about the story. The newest game at the time was Black and White when I started playing um when I started playing Pokemon. In fact I think I either got Black and White, but I didn't play it that much initially. I actually didn't like it that much initially. I think I just wanted to stick with the older Pokemon games for the time being. But yeah, eventually I would, um, eventually the 3DS would come out, I do believe. And with that, actually no, I think it was before then. I believe both of us, both me and my brother, eventually got a DS, which meant that we could play Pokemon games together on the thing. So that led us to, um, I think there's a good time to use push. So this led us to playing Pokemon games together. I believe that after Fire Red and then Emerald, I believe Diamond was the game that I probably played next. Actually no, I think it was Heart Gold now I think about it, but anyway. <laughs> it got the old stat boost, not great. Um, because that raises special attacks, so it's icy ones are going to hit harder now. So anyway, uh, so yeah, back to what I'm talking about, so yeah, like I said, I believe we started initially playing Heart Gold together, and I believe I was also playing some Diamond together. So, eventually, some weird things happened, and I ended up with a new file of Heart Gold. And my brother was generous. Oh, I got it again, ugh. <laughs> my brother was being generous this time around. So, he basically told me that I could create a team of Pokemon. Off my desire for a hot gold playthrough. But he was gonna do the same thing for his platinum playthrough. So. So, what team did I go with? The Pokemon I decided to go with was Skarmory, Raichu, Dugtrio, Starmie, Victory Bell, and Houndoom. 
all Pokemon I really wanted to use in Gen 4. Because some of those Pokemon I used in Fire Red and I liked using them. So, so yeah, there's that. Um, so, so yeah, there's that. So, <laughs> now the thing about this playthrough, this is the playthrough that made you a Pokemon fan because, yeah, it was the first playthrough where I got a Pokemon up to level 100. That being my Starmie. That was the first Pokemon that got to level 100. Everyone else did as well. And yeah, during that time I was also playing some Diamond. My brother, uh, he made this Platinum team. If I remember correctly, the team was Weavile, Jolteon, um, Slowking, Heracross, I think Dragonite. What was the last Pokemon? I can't remember that well, unfortunately. But yeah, that's what I remember at least. And yeah, eventually his team would get strong enough to be up my team, basically. Because yeah, remember. Another thing to remember about him too, he's better at most games than me, and also he is, um... And yeah, that also includes Pokemon as well. But... But yeah, I'm trying to think, what was that last Pokemon? I don't think it... I think it might have been Torterra. Because I think he did get a starter for that playthrough. You may notice my team, it had no starter whatsoever. <laughs> because yeah, I really want to use Starmie, Virtue Bell, and um, Houndoom. But anyway... Uh, do I have something that... I guess Magneto might be good here, because it resists ice. It doesn't have good special defense though. So yeah, I might just stick with Smiley to be honest. <laughs> but anyway... Just in case, because it still has the stab boost, so yeah, it might start hitting really hard with Superpower. Which would make Magneto a lot worse, but anyway. But yeah, now I think that, yeah, Torterra was probably the last Pokemon, but <laughs> on that person, on that brother's team, or my brother's team, I should be saying. So yeah, eventually, I would also be able to play Platinum. I believe that was... Was that after Black and, I got into Black and White? It might have been. But anyway, but, <laughs> but yeah, eventually Black and White 2 would come out. I believe I play it like slightly after it got released in English because yeah, Pokemon games used to be released in Japan first and then English. It's been a while since that hasn't been the case because yeah, they started world releases in Gen 6. And yeah, Gen 6, that was an interesting time by the way. We'll get into that a little bit, but anyway, so I believe before Black and White 2, I did get to try Black and White 1, and now I started liking it a lot, and I think over time I like it more and more and more, but Black and White 2 will still always be my favorite Pokemon game. I guess we can talk about that now. So yeah, Black and White 2, so there's so much I love about that game. I had a great first play for it as well. I believe, I think some of the highlights was I used Zoroark for the first time, I used Volcarona for the first time, I used Metagross, I used Magnazone, I used Samurai. I can't remember what the last one was, was it maybe Rose Raid? I can't remember. <laughs> I believe I was targeting um, the new additions to Black and White 2. So yeah, in the main story at least. Because yeah, that probably means that yeah, I did play Black and White 1 beforehand, so... So yeah, I did a lot in that playthrough. Like, I think I even did... With that team, I think I even did the... Um, White Forest, I believe that's what it's called. It's basically like, a really long dungeon. And your reward for being it is a shiny Pokemon. So that's really cool. I also did, eventually I'd also pick up Pokestar Studios and realize just how good it is. Because yeah, it's basically like the battle CDs from XD, only like, more creative. Because they're setting a film now. So they could do all sorts of weird stuff like, um, have you fight, um, made up Pokemon. That was really cool. Um, 
So yeah, I love Black White too. Eventually, um, eventually I start following um, X and Y's release. So yeah, I believe what happened was we both managed to get three DSs, which is or two DSs in our case actually. So yeah, that happened, um, and that meant that we could play X and Y together. Although I believe what actually happened was he played. Um, I believe he played Y first, and then for Christmas I played X. And yeah, that was fun. I believe Gen 6 is also the generation where I learnt about what EVs were. Um, so that was pretty cool. So yeah, I'm actually EV train. I even did some competitive battling. Mostly with my brother. Oh, it's struggling. So yeah, it, it's done for. Oh, it's actually not dead yet. <laughs> Uh, that means it's been a while, so terrible. So, let's see. One. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you can't negate struggle, by the way, so... Yeah, let's stop counting these. Why not? One. Two. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it's still paralyzed, though. Okay, this is really intense. I like this. <laughs> Too bad I can't heal it. If you have Pain Split, you can, but... Ah, uh, no, no dice there. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, by the way, something funny. Oh, it doesn't say that. <laughs> uh, I believe if you defeat it, it, they fly away or something. That's kind of hilarious, but anyway. Let's reset. I'll meet you guys when I actually weaken the red ice again. So yeah, now the red ice is weakened. I used to eliminate on Magneto. This time you can stare at Magneto's backside for this. So yeah, let's go back to the story. So now things are pretty simple. So it's Gen 6 now. Like I said, Gen 6 introduced a lot of um, basically the post-game stuff to Pokemon to me. Because, yeah, I learned about Eevee training, I Eevee trained a lot, and that was all good. Now I would actually follow the releases of all the mainline Pokemon games. So that means that, yeah, I would get Urus. I don't think I did anything too interesting in Urus. Actually, no. I believe Urus might have been the first game where I tried shiny hunting. That or it was Sun and Moon. I believe Sun and Moon was where most of my shiny Pokemon went cool. That or Ultra Sun, because yeah, that's during Gen 7. I got a fascination for sun, shiny hunting. It also helped that I had a lot of free time during that time as well. Because I believe during that time, it must have been my gap year, I think. So, so yeah, that means that yeah, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I was able to do uh, a lot of um, shiny hunting and stuff. See, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Then, like, university happened, and as you know, that's when I got, if you don't know this, around when I started going to university, that's when Fire Emblem hit me, and then that basically meant that Pokemon was no longer the game series that I was spending the most time on. That became Fire Emblem, because, yeah, then I started to binge that series heavily. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I still follow Gen 8. Um, and yeah, I had fun with that. My first playthrough, my only playthrough in fact, that was alright. I did definitely do some fun things with new Pokemon, and I, w I did like them. I guess I, could sh I should mention too about Gen 7. I also liked the new Pokemon there as well, quite a bit. In fact, I think Gen 7, if I was to compare like Gen 6 and 7, Gen 7 probably had the new Pokemon that I was looking forward to the most. But anyway, <laughs> I think Golisopod probably had something really big to do with that, so yeah. Because, yeah, if you don't remember what I was talking about, my favorite stars, Glycepod's actually my third favorite Pokemon. Kinda random, but yeah, that's how it went. <laughs> so, yeah, let's heal Magneto now. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Gen 8, like I said, I actually haven't done the post game for Gen 8. Kinda random, but yeah. For what I've heard, I see my brother do it, and yeah. It's not like the most amazing thing in the world, but hey. Maybe it's something I could do 
at some point when I have more free time. But yeah, <laughs> now I have other games that I'm interested in. Because there are the Fire Emblem, other games start interesting me, like SMT, Persona, of course. Both of them, in fact. And now Trails. So yeah, now I have a lot of game series on my mind. And also Xenoblade, let's not forget that. So, yeah. And yeah, that's how I became more of a casual Pokemon fan, but I still like Pokemon, especially the older games in the series. Like, I'll happily play Gen 3, Gen 4, and then Gen 5. The newer games, maybe not as much. Um, because, yeah, like I said, I do think that Gen 3 and 4 and 5 are better than, like, 6, 7, and 8. But I still like playing 6, 7, and 8, because they still give you... The amount of choices you have for Pokemon is insane, and also the fact that a lot of Pokemon are actually good in Gen 6 only. Because either they get new moves, or they, uh... Either they get new moves, or they just become stronger in general. A lot of that happens in, um, the newer Pokemon games. Because, yeah... Uh, that I could appreciate. <laughs> Even if, yeah, the Pokemon... If, even if the Pokemon's like not as good and competitive, at least it still has like lots of moves that I can make good use of. So yeah. So yeah, I say we've wrapped up that topic pretty good. Like I said, it's kind of a long story, and yeah. Quite fitting for this kind of long um, encounter we're having here. And yeah, it's a story I really like. Aww. <laughs> that was a perfect way to end that. But anyway. But yeah, I do have a feeling that we're gonna be in a better spot to catch at this point. It is low on health, I think. So, let's see here. So yeah, now I'm gonna jump genres a little bit. Uh, I have a... <laughs> I realized I listed this topic incorrectly, but... Oh well. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. So, favorite Persona characters. Let's do that topic because, yeah, I feel like, oh no, I'm trying to predict when I'm trying to catch this thing. It's not easy. <laughs> Actually, before I do that, I want to talk about something else too. I love this battle music. I also love the remixes of it. I don't know why, there's just something so good about it. I think Jed 3 as a whole has some of my favorite, literally, battle themes. So, that's very cool. And this and this battle theme here is one of the reasons, but yeah. By the way, for another one of the reasons why I love this battle theme so much later. But anyway, now let's actually go on to the topic. So yeah, favorite Persona characters. So Persona 1, I'm gonna hold my judgment on that because and also Persona 3. For Persona 1, it's because I'm gonna be playing Persona 1 later anyway, so I might as well tell you who my favorite character is and characters are in that game while I'm actually playing it. But, we can do the rest of the series, except for Persona 3. The reason for Persona 3 is, I've, for some weird reason, I just refuse to watch someone play that game. It's weird, but I think the reason why is because I'm thinking about playing it myself at some point. I'm not so sure when, but I would like to. Whether that's a remake of it, for like a modern console, or emulating um, the portable version. So yeah, one of those two things. But yeah, I can talk about Persona 2. Because even though I said that Persona 2 will probably be the game I play next, I say I'm familiar enough with it to talk about it, so why not? Let's do it. So for Persona 2, Innocent Sin, I probably have to give it to Maya. Well, not s I'm not going to spoil anything though. It's just because, yeah, she kind of reminds me of myself in this instance, to be honest, a little bit. Because she wants to stay positive. And while she's not able to do that always, like a lot of us, I do like the fact that she does. Um, and yeah, she definitely acts as basically like the main character who talks, because yeah, SNT loves to have a silent protagonist. And yeah, you do have a silent protagonist in Innocence, obviously. Um, but yeah, I will say that Tatsu is probably one of my favorite silent protagonists. That's probably because he has a really interesting backstory, and I also like how he interacts with the plot too. But yeah, like I said, I think 
Maya is probably my favorite character in Innocent Sin. In Eternal Punishment, that's a little bit harder because Eternal Punishment's cost I like more. And yeah, that's kind of a hot take. I was actually no, I wouldn't say it's a hot take, but the thing about it is that both costs have something that the other doesn't. Like Innocent Sin, the cost um the cost has like synergy between each other. And then internal punishment is the fact that um, the characters themselves are really interesting. Maybe because they're all adults. That's why a lot of people love internal punishment's cost. And yeah, uh, my favorite character, I think, this is kind of funny when you think about it, it's actually Tatsuya. <laughs> because yeah, I love Tatsuya's role in internal punishment. It's so good. And so relatable too. Um, but yeah, the other characters too are really good as well. I, w I was tempted to also say Katsuya, because I love his design, I like, from what I remember, I love his interactions with Maya as well, so yeah, he is a character I really like as well. Um, but yeah, the rest of the costume is aces, in my opinion, in Eternal Punishment. That's why I can't wait to play that game one day, <laughs> and experience that costume, because yeah, it's a good one. So... Like I said, Persona 3, can't really talk about that game because I haven't seen enough of it. So, because like I said, for some reason I just refuse to watch someone play it. Because like I said, I might be thinking about playing it myself, which is probably why I'm a bit hesitant. But anyway. I wasn't sure why I'm hesitant. Is it because I don't want to get spot? I don't think it's that, because I don't mind hearing what people have to say about Persona 3, so it can't be that. I think it's just... I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it's strange. But anyway, like I said, I'll skip Persona 3 for now. Because again, I'm not familiar with the game enough. I guess at the moment you could say it's I guess, but yeah, like I said, I don't know enough about the game, so yeah. Let's go on to Persona 4. So Persona 4, there's two characters. Oh yeah, I'm talking about main characters here. I guess that's fine. So there's two contenders for me. That'll be Chie and that'll be Naoto. And I believe Naoto is probably the one for me. I really like Chie though. I don't know why. There's just <laughs> I think I just find her really likable, even though yeah, the Sun of Four does suffer from having kind of bad comedy scenes. And Chie, yeah, she kinda of gets a ball of that sometimes because of Yosuke doing funny things. But anyway. Oh not again. <laughs> and well that's it. Yeah, this red choice is taking a long time to catch. Oh well. Alright, let's try catching it from this range now. It's higher on health, which probably means that it's not gonna catch again, but oh well. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's on the four characters. I've seen someone play the game, so yeah, I say I'm qualified enough to talk about the characters. So yeah, like I was saying, I probably get the edge to Naruto and Chi, but I still like Chi a lot. Because, yeah, like I said, um, yeah, she does have some kind of bad moods because of the comedy scenes and stuff, but I think she eventually cuts quite a likable character. I kind of like the social link from her, I remember as well. Of all the Pi member characters, I think maybe, um, hmm, who would I give that to, I wonder? Um, Maybe Kanji actually. Kanji had a really good social link. From what I remember correctly, so he might have my favorite, but I think I also like Naoto's a lot, so yeah. <laughs> That's another good reason to like Naoto, I guess. Um, but yeah, also, I kind of liked Chie's son as well. I like the fact that it focuses on a high crit rate, and. It gets some pretty good physical moves as well, it also gets power charge, which is always good. Acne Astra 2, that's a fun physical, um, that's a fun, um, physical attack. And so is, um, I believe it's Rainy Death, that's a high crit physical move, which is very good for what she is about, because she gets that pupil. So yeah, she's pretty fun. I believe, um, Kasumi in Royal plays kind of similarly. She also focuses on having a high crit rate to get knockdowns like that. But yeah, uh, uh, we're doing this again. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
Yeah, I think one problem with Chiyo though is, is that it's very hard to get ice skills on her. But then again, ice skills are not very good on her because she does have a good magic stat. So yeah, I guess there's that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Naoto now. So Naoto appeals to me a lot. I think <laughs> there's a couple of reasons. I kind of like the fact that our main weapon is a gun. I don't know why. I guess in the Persona series, guns I always liked. I don't know why that is. I guess Persona 1 probably has something to do that because you get some pretty outrageous damage with the gun sometimes. Especially on the main character because yeah, the main character gets a machine gun and the amount of hits it has is kind of insane. But anyway, but also you can't forget that Hirihiko also gets a machine gun too. That's one of the things I really like about And Magneto's gun, unfortunately. Probably because that will stop boost. But hey, maybe this is good luck. <laughs> with Smiley. That means I can also try an Ice Beam. Should I do that? No, I won't. Yeah, so I don't think it matters as long as it's kind of low, low red health, which it kind of is. <laughs> I could probably weaken it more, but yeah. So anyway, uh... <laughs> Back to what I talk about. So, so, like I said, I like Naruto's choice of weapon. It's a handgun, I do believe. And those normally aren't very good. Like, in Persona 1, they're kind of bad, but they did some... Okay, that, I probably did it. <laughs> well, I guess you're gonna find out why I like Naruto a lot next time. But yeah, here's Red Choice. Its entire body is made of Antarctic ice. After extensive studies, researchers have believed the ice was formed during an ice age. That probably means it's quite old. But anyway. Finally, that's done. That didn't really take that long, it's just that it took a lot of attempts. Man, that's fl I'm going to fly for you. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Let's go, Luko. Actually, no, a fortress is probably close to when you go next. So yeah, let's go with that then. Uh, Alright, let's look at the red choice now. It's a serious one, that's an alright nature, I guess. And yeah, there's the stats. And like I said, I do like the fact that it learns both Ice Fear and Thunderbolt, I think that's really cool. Anyway. So we are done. So, <laughs> so next time we're going to be going after the final of the golems in this game. <laughs> we need Flash, so make sure you bring that. Luckily, my side up does, so that's good. And then, yeah, next time we're gonna be, um, catching it, and also, maybe, hopefully, talk about Naoto as well, so. And also my favorite Persona 5 character, which actually is quite difficult, because I think I like the characters for different reasons, so that should be fun. But yeah, so yes, uh, see you guys again for that.